Hey guys, it's Sasha with Rice and Raw, and I've been catching up on my YouTube recently, and of course there's drama going on again. Um, I shouldn't have been surprised. So something that I've noticed to be really helpful to me, and hopefully it'll be helpful to you guys, if you're feeling that you're either being swayed by people really easily, or if you're very, very much for someone or very, very much against someone, I really implore you guys to take a step back and take almost a week off of YouTube or social media in general or two weeks if you can manage that and just kind of get your head on straight and kind of remember why you're a vegan to begin with and what is more important in this world and kind of formulate your own opinions on what's going on before you start watching people's YouTube channels of the opinion, you know, video of what is going on. Even though I love those. I find them very entertaining. It's almost like reality TV, only I'm a part of the community, so it's even more like interesting for me. Uh, so I love watching those, but the thing is, is I love like, like to make my own opinion first. So I don't watch them this channel. I'm like, oh yeah, I totally agree. I, I'm 100% for you. And then I'll watch the opposing person's channel and I'm like, oh wait, I do understand what you're saying. So I'm someone who kind of like understands both sides. And I found that it's very important for me to take a step back and create my own opinion first without outside influences telling me what to think. And I know that we, we, we all try to encourage that, um, but we don't encourage it on this level where we need to think for ourselves when it comes to interacting with fellow vegans. Um, a lot of the time, veganism, we all kind of assume we all must be thinking the same thing because we all are for the same cause. But all of us are different people and we go about things in different ways. So no matter what, there's always going to be conflict between groups. Sorry, my eyebrows look un uneven. Um, there's always going to be conflict between groups of people, even if they are all for the same cause. Um, the only time that group will band together and forget their differences is when another group is attacking that group. So what I'm trying to say is that create your own opinions, realize when you are almost being swayed by someone else. I'm not saying anyone is bad for trying to sway you. That's not at all. It's just they might have a very good skill and that's a great skill to have to be able to persuade people to believe things or sway people into what you believe. So with that being said, I want to talk about the ways to spread the vegan message. So um, I'm a big believer in bringing that wall down the barrier that we put up between us and people who choose to eat meat. I really want that wall to be down because I want us to seem as relatable as possible because it is a very intimidating factor and I'm sure a lot of people might forget this by being vegan for a certain amount of time but try to relate here where veganism is a very scary concept if it's brand new to you. Um, you're being told that everything you knew nutrition-wise is kind of a lie and all the food that you've eaten is no longer something you're going to be eating. So that already is terrifying. So, you know, bye-bye pizza, bye-bye burritos, bye-bye, you know, milkshakes and hamburgers doesn't necessarily have to be because there's really good vegan alternatives, but people don't like the, that idea because that's kind of like their cherished food. Meat is something that has been praised and prated around our society and cultures for a very long time. And it is ingrained in us that we need meat, that we live off of meat, that meat is what gives us power. Um, that's very ingrained in today's societies and cultures. Um, also, not only is that a terrifying change up in your whole entire life, but every like half your closet you have to get rid of. So, um, leather shoes, leather belts, leather jackets, uh, wool, your Uggs, um, your down comforter, your, you know, all of this stuff, it's a huge overhaul in your life. And that's very intimidating. And if you put the label on it, if you're like, I want to go vegan, but you're only able to do it halfway, or you're only able to do it for a little bit of time, you feel like you have the vegan police on you, you know, people are watching you, people are going to judge you, you know, like it's embarrassing if you, oh, I'm going to go vegan, I'm really excited, and a month later you're like, no, I'm not vegan anymore. It is embarrassing. You don't want to tell people that. So that step to veganism is scary, and we need to remember that. I was terrified. Like, I didn't really want people to know I was vegan in the beginning, 
Um, I didn't want people to judge me. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to do it. Um, it took me a while to transition over. It took me, you know, like, uh, say like two, two months to kick out all of the like dairy and egg products. I've already kicked out meat because I was already trying not to eat food anyway before that because I had an eating disorder. So that was already kind of not something I was too worried about. It was more the cheese and the eggs that was my problem. But it's okay to transition to veganism as well. I would much rather see someone take two years to transition to veganism and that'd be a permanent fixture in their life and they'll be vegan for the rest of their life than go vegan overnight and only be able to sustain it for like two weeks. And then maybe next year they'll try it again and maybe they'll get three weeks, you know? I, I want to see that like permanent fixture. I want it to be easy. So I hear a lot of people say, oh, I went vegan for like two weeks or a month and you know, and I went back because, you know, I just, my hair started falling out or I had a protein deficiency and it's, it's so apparent that they just didn't understand how to go vegan because, I mean, take the really dense nutrition and calorie sources out of their diet, which is the, you know, the eggs, the milk, the cheese, the meat, and what do they have left? So there's just like, they're trying to figure it out. It can be confusing and if you're not eating enough, which you probably won't be because you're probably be intuitively eating going into veganism, which is not helpful because your body is not used to that, so it can't intuitively eat. Intuitively eating comes with years of experience, honestly. Um, I have not been able to intuitively eat until maybe like two years, or like a year and a half into my transition, really, or into being vegan. Um, it, it took me a while. You can't just do it off the back because your body cannot intuitively understand what is going on because it's just changed its whole, you know, you just changed everything. Um, it's kind of like, intu like you're telling someone to intuitively run this marathon to someone who's never run before. It's like, you mean walk and then like take a shortcut? That's, that's my intuitively, you know, if you ask, if you told me to go run a marathon intuitively, you know, so you tell someone who's been running marathons all their life to intuitively run a marathon, they'd be fine. They'd know what to do. They've had experience with it. But you have to walk through that entire freaking marathon, or you have to train for that marathon and then run through that marathon with a goal and a plan first before you can start running marathons intuitively and understanding your, you know, where you're going to go with it and when you need to rest and when you need to step up your game. It's the same thing with, you know, dietary change. So, um, kind of off topic, but I really want to bring that, down that wall, that barrier between us and people who choose to eat meat. They are not the enemy. They are someone who can be an ally in the future. That's what they are. Um, and we need to remember that, like I said, veganism is a very intimidating idea, and it's a very frowned upon idea because of the way society is today because meat means manly, meat means cool, meat means um, strength and gains and you know whoa, like and to give that up then what are you then then you can't be manly right and I know a lot of guys have you know don't really go vegan because that's kind of an issue and they're lifting at the gym and you know they got their bros being like dude you know what's going on? You, you being a little, you know, a little bitch, you're not eating meat, you're going to lose those gains. You know, that's very, you don't really want to deal with that. And maybe you, maybe you are scared to lose gains, which doesn't happen. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I can, I can see how it's an intimidating thing. So when people ask me about veganism, I have lunch and dinner with non-vegans all the time. It, it has to come up because I have to tell the waiter I'm vegan. I have to. It, doesn't work out otherwise so people will ask and will I be like well vegan blah 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 no like I want to make them feel comfortable and it's very rare that there's someone who is kind of an asshole to me about it like right off the bat like I, I can tell sometimes there's someone who's like not liking the idea and like kind of already judging me but you know we'll tiptoe around each other and they'll kind of see that I'm not gonna force feed them grass and <laughs> everything's going to be fine and then they kind of warm up to you um but mainly i've just find, found people who are damn interested like what the hell you're some like freak of nature um but i really want to make them realize it's it's really 
It's really feasible, honestly. And uh, it was the best decision of my life. And I want people to understand that and know that. And when they see me and they, they say they're comfortable with me now, and so they see, wow, why are you so like wide-eyed in the morning and you just like go all day and you just work super hard? Like, how do you do that? And, um, you know, you're putting on muscle really quickly. You know, you have the strength to do this. How? And, and I can, I now have the floor to explain it to them. And even if these people never, ever go vegan, even if it's not in their mind that they want to, at least they know that it is more feasible than they thought. That maybe it's not the end of the world. Maybe there's some really delicious foods you can eat. Maybe they'll have a vegan meal every once in a while. At least that is a step as opposed to them thinking, well, I've never experienced veganism, but that girl's an asshole. I'm not going to, I'm never going to go vegan. I'm going to eat extra meat now. <laughs> You know, it's, it's much better than that. So I really, I want, I want to be friends with meat eaters because I want them to see, like, it doesn't change you. You don't have to be a cult leader now of the hippies just because you went vegan. You don't need to give up your job and your car. You can still be you. You don't need to be like, what you know, the crazy vegan that people hate, you know. You can just still live your life, but live it in a healthier, more mindful and compassionate way. Um, so yeah, I really hope that there are more people out there like me who, who want to do that, who can be comfortable with people who you meet and understand where they're coming from and try to like encourage the good behavior. So my friend, she was thinking of going vegan. She saw earthlings. She's vegetarian, but she still eats fish. I, I Awesome, like, I, awesome. Like, why would I at all say anything bad about that? That's amazing. She's still doing a, a good part, honestly. And who am I to tell her that it's not good enough? Because that will just make her go running back to eating meat. So it, honestly, any little step I think is good. And you, you gotta appreciate that, honestly, because when you're grateful, more good things will come. So if you encourage good behavior, like not encourage it, it's not like they're dogs, but you know, if you think, you know, if you say, well, wow, good for you doing meatless Mondays, awesome, like high five them, like that's so cool of you. And you know, every Monday you're like, meatless Mondays, you know, and you encourage it. Maybe someone else around the room will be like, I kinda wanna do meatless Mondays, it seems kinda cool. You know, make, make the whole atmosphere positive towards eating plants and I honestly think that's the best way to go about it. And it's not gonna be an overnight thing. It's it's gonna be a very gradual thing. Maybe this person won't even consider eating vegetarian or vegan for another five years, but at least this kind of set them up to get to that point. Um, so if you, you know, you're know you telling someone you're wrong, you're bad for eating meat, they're gonna run for the hills. They don't wanna deal with you. They don't wanna be anything like you. So. Same thing with like people with addictions, you know, you tell a smoker they're a bad person for smoking, go away, go away, you're nothing. And people don't like someone addressing their addictions or their habits. Um, I personally don't like when people address like TV um, because like, oh, I don't watch TV anymore. I honestly, I get kind of jealous because I am, I'm, a, I'm kind of addicted to TV. I really love it. I'm not ready to give up my TV yet, maybe one day in the future, but I'm not ready right now. But if someone told me, oh, you really shouldn't be watching TV, I'd be like, God damn it, leave me alone, I know. Um, <laughs> so it, it's more of a busying myself, you know, having more hobbies where TV is not as commonplace as it used to be. Um, just putting more positive spins on things like that, honestly. Uh, so hopefully this video resonates with you guys. I really want you guys to go out there and interact with people who eat meat and leave a positive impression of the plant-based lifestyle and a vegan lifestyle and show people that you don't need to be like completely different just because you change your dietary patterns. Um, you know, be relatable and be friendly and I swear people will really like that and they'll want to be around you more, they'll ask you more questions. I have this person I work with, he's great, every time I'm introduced to people. He tells people that I eat 10 bananas for breakfast. 
it's a huge, it's a really great talking point. Everyone wants to know what's going on with this girl. How can she eat 10 bananas? Crazy. But it starts a conversation and people will remember me and people have tried eating bananas. Like I have a friend um, who I worked with. I just mentioned to him briefly, like, oh yeah, I'll eat 10 bananas for breakfast. And he started eating bananas on, his, on the subway to work. And he was like, I feel great. I ate eight bananas today on the subway. This was amazing. Um, so little things like that can really change, change people's lives. So get out there and do your vegan thing, guys. See you later.